and the recording will be sent out probably later on this evening. So if you do want to go back and reference anything that's covered during the session today, feel free to do so. Also attached to that recording is going to be a questionnaire. Uh, we, we certainly value our student and alumni opinions. Um, so we want to make sure that um, we're capturing that information. So please feel free to uh, submit that questionnaire. It should take you no more than two minutes. Um, this is a career quest session. So we have a career quest is going on over the course of the month of September. So we have a ton of sessions running. Uh, so keep an eye out for other sessions. Um, encourage you to join those. Uh, and then what I will do from here is I will pass it over to our presenters. Uh, Lauren, I, are you going first? Yes. Awesome. So I will pass it over to Lauren. Hi everyone, we're so excited that you've joined us. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and that will tell you what we are going to talk about today, uh, which is all about two great federal agencies that are helping people make a difference, not only here in the United States, but also abroad as well. AmeriCorps and Peace Corps. So we're gonna get started with some introductions about each of our agencies and about ourselves as presenters. We've got a lot of great information to cover. And of course, there will be plenty of time for questions after, and you can also put them in the chat and we'll kind of go through those uh, afterwards as well. So I will turn it over to Sarah to introduce her and AmeriCorps. Hi everybody, thank you so much. for user Utah. Cool thing of our commission is that we are one of the states in the nation has a similar commission. So some thing to keep in mind. A lot of different ways. Last years. In the community and talking about AmeriCorps and then people. Country. So. Sarah, you're coming in choppy again. It's it's still it's still choppy, Sarah. And if you want to try camera off to see if that that helps too, we can do that. Thanks everybody for hanging in with technical difficulties. Still choppy, unfortunately. Sarah, I can just go ahead and uh, move along with this, and then when you're ready, just come off mute in the next section and hopefully we'll have it figured out by then. So just a little bit of what Sarah was saying is she represents AmeriCorps, which is a federal agency for uh, volunteerism and national service. They have a lot of programs and each state has their own commission on service and volunteerism where they work with local community partners, nonprofits, organizations, religious organizations that are in need of volunteers that have skills that will help and support them uh, on projects that they've identified as needing assistance with. So there's indirect as well as direct service opportunities. And they've been around for a, a while, just like Peace Corps, but again, a federal service agency that is available in all of our states. 
Okay, so a little bit about me. My name is Lauren Willie. I am a recruiter for Peace Corps. We are also uh, a US federal agency. I served in Cameroon, West Central Africa, and got to learn to speak four languages. Um, one comes in handy, French, every so often, and the other three come in handy only if I want, don't want people to know uh, what I'm saying, which uh, comes in handy more, more often than not. I served in the health sector, and uh, both Sarah and I will talk about the different areas of service uh, in both of our agencies. So, with Peace Corps, our mission is to promote world peace and friendship. So, while AmeriCorps is focused on national service in all of our 50 states, Peace Corps is focused on international service. So, we're in over uh, 60 countries right now. We've been in 144 countries during our lifetime, and uh, our mission hasn't changed in the 63 years that we've been around, which is to promote world peace and friendship by helping to meet the needs of interested countries who have invited us to come and work with their local communities in a number of different projects that, again, same with AmeriCorps, the local communities and organizations are the one identifying what those projects and needs are that we can help fulfill as well. Another big tenant of Peace Corps uh, is that we are not only sharing you know, our culture as we are working with our communities, but as our volunteers come back to the United States and back to their hometowns, that they're sharing uh, the culture that they've become familiar with and the languages that they've learned and their experience kind of bridging that gap and being a window into a very unique experience. Uh, just to give you a snapshot, um, to date, we've had over 240,000 volunteers serve in the Peace Corps, and it, it's about 7,000 volunteers that are out uh, in the countries annually. Um, we've served in 143 countries. We just added on Vietnam as a new country, and we'll be returning to El Salvador and Palau at the request of those countries as well. But about 45% of all of our requests come from countries in Africa. Education is our most requested sector. And again, we'll talk about all the sectors in just a minute as we talk about our different programs. And then we have volunteers that range in age right now from 20 to 86. So there's no upper age limit uh, to serving in Peace Corps. And uh, our, our general program is about 20, 27 months. So. That's a good segue into our programs, uh, our openings and resources to learn more about uh, both of our organizations. Sarah, how is your audio coming? Does it sound any different? If not, oh, I'm, I'll try perfect. calling in. You're clear. Yay. Clear as day. <laughs> Take Thanks it away. Patience. Oh my goodness. Okay. So we will jump into the focus areas for AmeriCorps service. So when you find an opportunity to serve, you will be serving in at least one of these areas. Sometimes there is a little bit of overlap between the focus areas, but it'll at least cover one of these for your term of service. So disaster services, that can look like responding in communities that have been affected by disaster. A lot of that recently, we've been seeing floods, fires, tornadoes, and hurricanes. So these AmeriCorps members go into those communities that are affected by those things. They help with things like repairing homes, helping those that have been affected by the disaster get access to the resources that they need to move forward. And then economic opportunity. Those members are helping people develop work skills. They're helping them access affordable housing, helping them with financial literacy. Um, a big part of this one is connecting people to jobs. So if you're interested in helping people figure out their next steps and move forward in their careers, this can be a really cool focus area for you. Education is a really big one. It's kind of self-explanatory, but I'll give you a few more details. Um, AmeriCorps members can be serving in public schools, private schools, charter schools. Um, it covers all ages, so primary school up through high school. You can be helping students with their academic goals. 
There are also a lot of opportunities to help students improve with their social emotional learning as well as their attendance. There is a big focus on high school graduation as well as college readiness. So this is a really cool area to serve in. If you're interested in moving into education or education administration, it's a great way to get experience. Environmental stewardship. This one, I will give a few examples in Utah. So sometimes you're out boots on the ground, building trail, trails, maintaining public lands, but there's also a lot of opportunities to do individual placements where you can be doing things like education, and helping students that are out on field trips learn about the ecosystems and the ways that they can preserve it. Um, another interesting factor of environmental stewardship is some members are doing things like helping improve the home energy efficiency of houses and how that can affect the environment. So it's, it's a lot of hands-on work, environmental stewardship, and it can help with a lot of different career paths. Healthy Futures, we have members serving in places like food banks, um, helping with homelessness services, uh, addressing food insecurity, um, and accessing healthcare resources. So that kind of covers a wide variety of things. Here in Utah, we have um, a pretty big program that is doing a lot of public health type work. So if that's an area you're interested in, that can be a great focus area. Then finally, we have veterans and military families. So this service can look like connecting veterans and their families to education, to job opportunities, to accessing the benefits that they've earned from their service. Um, another focus can be helping people transition back into civilian life. So those are the main focus areas there. And then next we'll cover a few of the different programs within AmeriCorps that you can serve with. So AmeriCorps is a big umbrella and there's a few different ways that you can serve as a member. So this first one, AmeriCorps VISTA, these individuals are serving full time for a full year. They are really focused on capacity building within the organization that they are partnered with. And no matter where you're serving, your focus is lifting communities and individuals out of poverty. So these positions are really great if you want to learn more about the inner workings of working for different nonprofit organizations or different agencies. This does, like I said, are a little more behind the scenes. So they are doing things like volunteer recruitment, volunteer training, uh, building out different programs and initiatives for the organization they're partnered with, developing new partnerships for that organization, um, and accessing more resources. So really what they are trying to do is help the organization reach their mission and expand what they can accomplish. Next, we have AmeriCorps State and National. So the big difference between these first two is VISTA, you are behind the scenes, State National, you are doing hands-on direct service. So you are out in communities, you are out serving in food banks, connecting individuals with the resources that they need. Uh, they can also do some capacity building, but the biggest difference here is that state and national is hands-on. They also have a little more flexibility with the terms of service. So that first one, VISTA, full-time for a full year, state and national, they can be as little as three months and then up to a full year. There's a lot more flexibility with that second one. And then finally, we have AmeriCorps NCCC. This is another really cool and unique opportunity. So NCCC are teams of people that are 18 to 26 years old, and they hop around within different regions of the country to do uh, shorter term but high impact projects. So we are actually in the Pacific region. The other regions are North Central, Southern, and Southwest. So if you were interested in joining NCCC, you decide what region you wanna serve in, knowing that within that region, you could be hopping around to a lot of different places to work with a few different organizations. Uh, the teams are usually eight to 10 individuals. And then the term of service for NCCC is three to 14 weeks. And another really cool thing about NCCC 
is that your travel, your housing, and your meals are all covered. So if you are a younger adult, you're interested in traveling, meeting new people, and doing some high-impact service, AmeriCorps NCCC can be a really great fit for you. And then a few more basics about serving with AmeriCorps. We've touched on a few of these, but we have some flexibility. So if you could only serve part-time, we can make that happen. If you are looking for something to do full-time, we have opportunities for you. Um, a great thing about doing an AmeriCorps term of service is that you're partnered with an organization. And when you apply, you know what organization you're applying to partner with. So you can really nail down the exact type of work that you want to be doing. So you can choose something that fits your future goals and an area that you want to gain more experience in. You typically are serving 10 to 12 months, but like I said, there are also shorter term opportunities. We have a few, especially here in Utah, that you can do just during the summer. So if you were looking for something to do for about three months, we do have opportunities that are even shorter than what we have here on the slide. Another great thing about serving with AmeriCorps is that we don't just drop you in to start your service. You are getting training before you start and throughout your term of service. You get training from the AmeriCorps agency, from my agency, USERV Utah, as well as with the organization that you're partnered with. So you will do a ton of professional development, a lot of great networking, you do receive benefits during your service as well as after your service, and we'll cover those a little more later on in the presentation. And there are a few eligibility requirements to be aware of. So you can see a few of those here, and you can see the full eligibility requirements as well on AmeriCorps.gov. There are a couple eligibility requirements for your age, depending on what program you're interested in serving with, as well as your residency status. So that's a good thing to be aware of if you're interested in serving. And then the final thing I wanted to say for this section is if you're starting to get curious and you want to learn more about exactly what types of things you can be doing and what service would look like, the opportunities that we have, you can go to americorpgov slash join and you will find a lot of great resources on that page, a lot of great descriptions about what a term of service with AmeriCorps can do for you. And then I wanna really hit on this find your fit button that you'll see on that page. So if you click on that, you'll be able to sort opportunities by the time availability that you have, your age group, your interest area, as well as your location. So either where you live or where you'd like to serve, they have a feature that can really nail down all of those opportunities so you can find something that is perfect for you. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Sarah. Lots of great stuff in there. And we've put websites in the chat if you want to visit those and, and find your fit for AmeriCorps. So now we're going to kind of go over the same thing that Sarah just did for AmeriCorps, uh, but with its focus on Peace Corps. We have three different types of programs. Uh, we have two international and we actually have one new one that is virtual. So our most popular one is for U.S. citizens age 18 and older to spend 27 months abroad in a country doing three months of training followed by two years of service. Our Peace Corps response is for experienced professionals who have been in their field for quite a few years and have become subject matter experts that they're able to go and do a shorter term opportunity because they don't need as much training as we give to our more generalist positions in Peace Corps volunteers. Um, our response positions are anywhere from three to 12 months, which the average being around seven months. And then our virtual service pilot program is new. It came out of when we evacuated all of our volunteers across the world and allows private citizens to donate their time to work with local communities virtually in helping really to focus on capacity building and 
project management and some more of those foundational pieces that will really help them grow and build programs that they need within their own communities. So this is a map of all of the countries that have currently invited us to bring in volunteers to work on projects with their local communities. So if we're not in it, it could be for safety and security reasons, but it could also be that it is a country that hasn't invited us to be there. So this is a breakdown of the different areas that we work in, and there is a lot of great overlap with AmeriCorps and the different area concentrations that they have as well. So our agriculture program is primarily focused on food security as uh, things are changing, growing seasons are changing, and rainy and dry seasons are changing as well around the globe. We're really working with local farmers, hands on with them to promote food security. Our youth and development sector is focused on helping to provide opportunities for youth, helping them to develop those leadership skills and those um, practical skills really early on in life so that they have the opportunity to be future community leaders and to really pursue what they're wanting. Uh, in the next couple of years, uh, it's been told to us that about 10% of the world's population living in poverty will be youth. And there are a lot of countries that are wanting to focus on youth and sports programs and just helping youth gain those skills early on in life and have support early on so that they're able to grow and develop and pursue education, pursue technical skills, and just have somebody there to help empower them. As I said earlier, our education sector is the largest one. We focus on English, math, and science. And it's generally focused more on the middle to high school age range. And what we're doing is we are uh, training teachers to teach these subjects after our volunteers leave from the community. Our environment sector uh, makes up about 7% of our requests that come in but it's really focused on conservation and uh, sustainability for natural resources in the future. Our health sector is the second largest. This is public health and health education to help communities focus on disease prevention, nutrition, and maternal and child health. Our community economic development sector is small business in creating economic opportunities and helping them reach different platforms and use different uh, technology that we have these days to really increase their their reach. And then as our volunteers are spending time integrating into communities and really getting to know what the needs are through these primary project in these sector areas, they have a lot of autonomy and freedom to do a lot of other projects that they see a community might need and that there's community support for. So our big thing through all of this is sustainable impact and that we're transferring skills and knowledge to help build capacity of local organizations, of schools, of health centers, so that all of, all of what we do doesn't leave with us, but stays in that community, stays with counterparts who work with us to understand how we can best support what the development needs are going to be for the individual communities that apply for a volunteer to come. So you have options on where to serve. You can apply directly to a country of program that you're interested in, or you can say, I've always wanted to go to the Pacific Islands, but I don't really care, or I don't have a preference on which sector or what my day-to-day -day work looks like. So there's flexibility with a serve where needed most opportunity as well. And you can filter by sectors. Um, we have a handful of countries that have Spanish as a prior language requirement. You can look at the regions and countries we're in, departure dates, because our application process is about six to nine months, because it does include medical and legal clearance as well, since we're sending you internationally and want to make sure that if you have a peanut allergy, you're not being sent to a region where you'll be eating that on a daily basis. And we also have opportunities for couples to serve together. So why do people choose the Peace Corps in our programs? 
it's a very hands-on, very collaborative, grassroots-driven effort um, that we have been in uh, since the early 60s. Uh, it allows our volunteers to understand what it's like to fully integrate into a community, to learn another language, and to build relationships that last a lifetime. I've been home for 14 years, and I still talk to my counterpart who I worked with who applied for me to come to their village and with a lot of students who uh, I worked with at the local school in our health club as well. It really gives you an opportunity uh, for professional development and some uh, just things that will help you in everyday life that maybe you don't get formal education for or have those opportunities either. It's a very unique service opportunity and is unique to every individual that comes to serve as well. No two service opportunities, just like no two individuals are the same. It really allows you to adapt, learn and grow in many ways. I never thought I'd you know, kill a chicken and uh, I did. I never thought I'd had to fetch water or take a bucket bath, um, but, but these are all things that you really learn how to do uh, as you're integrating into the community. And it really allows you to be a window for others who are following your journey, for others who wanna know what it's like and, and what you're doing, and you can really help provide them with that as you are in your service, just like with AmeriCorps. And then every day you're working to make a lasting difference. So, uh, I know that this is why a big reason why you all came is, you know, why would you uh, choose AmeriCorps? Why would you choose Peace Corps? What are the benefits uh, of it other than, you know, giving service in a local, national, or international capacity? So, I'll pass it back over to Sarah as she takes you through the benefits of AmeriCorps service. Awesome. Thank you, Lauren. So exciting to hear about you killing a chicken. I don't think any of the AmeriCorps members I know have had to do that yet. We have different types of adventure over here at AmeriCorps. Um, we'll go through some of these benefits. So while you are serving as an AmeriCorps member, you do receive a bi-weekly living allowance. So this is a modest amount to keep you going. Um, it does vary program to program. So if you're interested in finding the exact amount for a specific position, I would recommend that you again, go to that americorps.gov slash join and start checking out positions that you're interested in. You can receive childcare assistance for children. If you are serving a full-time term, you can receive the Siegel AmeriCorps Education Award. So this is very similar to a scholarship. It is an amount that you receive after you have completed your term of service. So the amount is equal to the maximum value of the Pell Grant for the fiscal year in which you complete your term of service. So if you're interested in finding out that amount, you can just look up and see whatever the Pell Grant amount is. So if you were to serve a full-time term of service, you would receive that full amount of the Pell Grant. If you were maybe going to do a part-time term of service, it's just prorated according to how many hours that you decide to serve. So you get a little bit of money as you go with that living allowance, and then you get that big chunk of money when you finish your term of service. So that education award can go toward your future education expenses. It can also be used to pay for qualified loans, student loans that you may have. Um, you, for VISTA members, you enjoy non-competitive eligibility to make it easier to get hired by federal agencies. So if that is a future career goal for you, VISTA can be a great way to get your foot in the door when you're ready to move on to the next step in your career. You get a lot of professional development and training. There is healthcare coverage that includes dental, vision, and mental health services for those serving full-time terms of service. If you decide to serve with AmeriCorps VISTA, you can receive a relocation allowance. So if you're checking out different positions that are available in different spots for AmeriCorps VISTA, that can be a great benefit to check out. 
Um, you can also enjoy forbearance of your student loans while you are serving, which can make a big difference. And another one that's not on here that I'd love to mention is there's also an alumni network. So when you complete your term of service, you are joining a large group of AmeriCorps alumni and they are very active and very supportive. And there are a lot of great resources that are shared amongst alums for finding jobs and updating resumes. So another great benefit is that you're joining a great group of people that are committed to making a difference and supporting each other. Perfect, thanks, Sarah. So a little bit about benefits during service for Peace Corps. We provide you with a monthly living stipend, which is tied to uh, more than enough that you'll need, uh, but to your local community. So it's not enough for an opulent lifestyle abroad, but it's enough to cover all of your day-to-day um, -day needs, incidentals, food, and all of that during your service. Housing has already been identified and approved based on our safety and security needs for our volunteers. We cover your plane ticket to and from country. While in service, we cover all medical and dental needs that you'll have, mental health as well. And then if you do have any student loans that you've taken out, um, depending on the lender, there are opportunities for partial cancellation or deferment of payment because we don't want that to be a barrier, but all lenders um, go about it a little bit differently, but are really great in working if Peace Corps is something that you are looking for. And then you get a lot of hands-on career skills and training at professional development throughout your service in Peace Corps. Then benefits after service. So for our 27 month opportunity, um, you are accruing a transition towards transition funds when you return home. So for the 27 month opportunity, when you return home, we deposit $10,000 pre-tax into your account for you to use however you'd like. Um, you, there are lots of opportunities for you to continue to develop your professional skills through different in-service trainings that we have, as well as um, the network of return Peace Corps volunteers that will help you through your transition back to life in the United States. Um, there's also graduate school benefits for anyone who completes a year or more in response or with the 27 month opportunity, you are eligible for a lifetime benefit. Uh, we have over 100 partner colleges and universities that offer over 200 different programs at a free or significantly reduced tuition cost. Uh, we also have federal employment advantages. Uh, we ourselves are a federal agency and like to hire return Peace Corps volunteers and AmeriCorps members as well. And we also have non-competitive eligibility for those who complete 27 months of service uh, for them to, if you're looking to be hired on at a federal agency, it does make that process easier and it shortens the wait time in when you'd hear back from different agencies on whether or not you've gotten the job. Uh, student loan assistance, when you return, there are more benefits depending on which federal agency you go to work for that could count towards student loan support. And then we also have a career resource department for return volunteers who come back because you've been away from the job market for a little bit and you've got a great team that can help with resume reviews, interview prep, all of that. And we have our own job board for agencies and organizations that are looking to hire return Peace Corps volunteers, knowing the very specific uh, experience and uh, skills that they come back with. And then there are additional service opportunities. You know, you can come home and say, I want to go again, um, or I want to join AmeriCorps. Uh, AmeriCorps and Peace Corps have a revolving door. We have a lot of people who come back from service, love what they do, and go right into AmeriCorps. And then we also have AmeriCorps members that want to continue service, but on a different level and go international, help with that international travel. And it's amazing to see kind of this revolving door between our two agencies and the amazing people who are wanting to make a difference in the world. Uh, so this is just a bit about our graduate school benefit. Again, it is lifetime, so there's no expiration date on when you can pursue it. 
uh, financial aid scholarships, uh, all the application fees are waived and you can even connect and reach out to the heads of the programs uh, and talk to them about how many uh, spots are available uh, and what they're looking for in applicants for their programs as well to help give you that competitive edge too. So now we have gone through quite a bit of information and we want to open it up to all of you to ask Sarah or myself questions about uh, these two organizations, federal agencies that are supporting service um, here nationally and in internationally as well. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. You can put it in, you can put your questions in the chat and we can answer them, or I believe you can come off mute as well. Yes, you can come off mute or you can post your questions in the chat and uh, I'll, I'll kick it off and, and ask a question. Um, so uh, a lot of the benefits you had gone over and in, in, in as far as like career skill sets that you'll, you'll obtain over the course of your, your service. Um, what are, what are some things that maybe stand out to either 1 of you um, as far as leveraging that ex experience uh, for individuals as they progress in their career? So, what are some things that maybe they could focus on on their resume um, that that might help them stand out as they advance forward in their career? That's a great question RJ um, as uh, federal agencies. Um, we, we review a lot of resumes and our resumes are very much uh, unique because we ask for a lot of information. So with a federal resume, there actually isn't a, uh, a, a length that you're supposed to have. We don't believe in a one page because we, we know that people have a lot of great skills. Um, what I would focus on, whether you are, you know, going the federal agency route without any um, length requirement, or you're applying to an industry that has a length requirement, is be very specific about what you're putting on your resume. Don't just put, you know, worked with kids um, or, you know, developed a new integrated system that improved overall productivity is really focused on the, the impact of it. You know, created a new system with a team of 10 experts to increase productivity in sales by 47% over the course of a quarter. So I see a lot of people coming in and they've got a lot of things on their resume that says a lot, but actually doesn't say anything either. Um, just because maybe they've copied and pasted it, but AI is getting really good at helping you with those specifics as well. Um, so I would just make sure that you're you're very direct and very specific um, about your accomplishments on your resume, and and make sure that you you know you toot your own horn too. Um, you've accomplished a lot uh, over the course of working and uh, with education as well. So this is not not the time to be humble, but the time to to really shine. Yeah, if I could just add another great thing about serving, especially with AmeriCorps, is that you develop a lot of great connections that can be exceptional references for you. So with AmeriCorps, you're going to have a site supervisor as well as a program director. You're also working with a lot of other people that are employed at the organization you partner with to serve. So you build a really great network of people that you can count on to vouch for you and your abilities. And that can be really useful as you're looking for other jobs and moving on to your next steps. Thank you both. Uh, we did have a question come in in the chat. Um, what are some things you wish you knew when you started your journey at AmeriCorps or Peace Corps? I can start. I, the big thing, I get this question a lot when I'm out at booths, people asking me um, how I got started with AmeriCorps or how I found out about it. And I actually did not know about AmeriCorps 
until I was already like moving on in my career from a time where I feel like I could have really benefited from it. So I did not have awareness of this opportunity. So a big thing that I wish I knew, especially when I was trying to figure out like what I wanted to do with my life, I wish I had just known that I could serve with AmeriCorps. I think it would have helped me explore different things and probably would have helped me figure out what I'm good at and what I enjoy doing a lot sooner. So I had a lot of jobs that kind of ended up being dead ends for me because it wasn't the type of work that really like lit my fire. So I just wish that I had known about AmeriCorps as a young adult and I wish that I would have served. I think it would have been a great, great way for me to narrow down what I love to do and what my skill set actually is. hundred percent agree with you, uh, Sarah. Uh, I think um, no one can ever fully describe or prepare you for what Peace Corps service is like uh, in the country that you'll be in. Uh, because everyone comes with their own unique background, uh, your own values and your own lenses too. And, uh, I, I think 1 of the most challenging parts about Peace Corps and, and what I wish, uh, and, and what I did get from a couple of mentors that I had as I was going into it is that, uh, it. Both AmeriCorps and Peace Corps are learning opportunities. Yes, you're coming in to. Um, support a community and to maybe help meet that need or that gap, but it really is a an individual growth opportunity as well. And it's a great thing um, to take advantage at any time of life. And, you know, we had a 60 year old with us who was there as part of his retirement. Um, we had some younger couples there uh, in our training group and, and throughout our service too. Um, and that you have to pick what what the best time is in life for you for these experiences and opportunities uh, as well. Because if you go out at the wrong time, you may come home early, and um, it's just it's a it's an amazing opportunity. And I I think I wish I would have known just what doors were available to me through you know having Peace Corps on my on my resume. Peace Corps is part of my experience. Because uh, I definitely would have taken uh, more advantage of those opportunities coming back, um, but rather than just kind of climbing back into my own shell, not knowing what how to fit back into life here in the United States after you've been abroad and, and lived and worked in a really rural and remote area, and that transition back to you know grocery stores that have you know 50 options for cheese and a hundred different boxes of cereal and you go and you're frozen and you're like, there was one thing at the market I could buy every week. It was bread and chicken. <laughs> That's all I got. But, um, but there are really great advantages um, to both of our organizations being on your resume and, and taking advantage of the doors that it opens for you and what employers are looking for um, is that, do you get back to the community? Are you invested in, you know, something beyond the job, and we've heard it from a lot of different employers about why would you hire a return Peace Corps volunteer? Why would you hire somebody in AmeriCorps? And it's because you come with a certain amount of adaptability and you're, you're going to be somebody who is a problem solver. And you're going to be somebody who is working towards solutions. And they say that that just enhances and enriches um, their, their teams and and just gives them the ability to to stay ahead and um, in really competitive markets too is the talent that you're bringing on and the experiences that they've had as well. Any other questions that anybody has? Oh, yes, we did have a question come in. Uh, when would you suggest to apply for either organization as a, as a college student? Due to the long application process, would you suggest applying before graduation? Yeah, for Peace Corps, um, you can apply well ahead of 
graduation, because we do know that it takes a long time, especially that medical and legal clearance. And so um, we do have on our website opportunities for you to look at departure windows and it'll kind of calculate when you should start applying. So just um, just as an example, if you are beginning kind of your final year kind of in, a, in the traditional sense and um, with a spring graduation, uh, you can apply as early as August 1st when our opportunities are posted for a departure window between July and September of 2025. So they could apply as early as August 1st for a January 1 application deadline, which would be July through September departure that following year. So we have four departure windows each year. So depending on what you're you're looking for, we can help you navigate and, and calculate that backwards to find out when when you can begin applying so that you'll know ahead of graduation um, whether or not you've received an invitation to serve um, and what other options and opportunities might be there if you ultimately decide that you know Peace Corps is not something that you want to pursue after graduation as well. For AmeriCorps, we do have fewer hoops to jump through than Peace Corps, so you can um, apply as you're a college student, especially if you want to serve while you're in college. We do have a lot of college students that serve as they study. If you were thinking about applying um, following graduation, I would say most positions can get you onboarded in about a month, maybe a month and a half. And as you're going through an AmeriCorps application, you will be in touch with the program director for the program you're applying for. So you can also work with them to communicate your ideal start date and they will work with you. We're pretty flexible. Another question that I think we can both answer is, you know, what makes a competitive applicant for both AmeriCorps and Peace Corps? And for Peace Corps, AmeriCorps service um, makes you a more competitive applicant. We're also looking for those who have had um, any, any college and certainly having a college degree makes you more competitive because a lot of the countries that we work in require that as part of a visa to come and work in their country for two years. We're also looking for those who have been involved in their community, have worked with youth, um, and by involved in their community, I mean other volunteer service like AmeriCorps, or if you volunteered with another organization or another project as well. And then those um, technical skills that you've been gaining through education and through different jobs that you've had as well um, is, is what we're looking for. And especially if you've ever studied a language in high school or um, know another language that also makes you competitive because language learning is a big part of of peace corps service as well and i will let sarah talk about that and then we will both put our contact information in the chat if you want to reach out to us and uh, any other questions that you have or wanted to get connected to a program in your area or for peace corps or recruiter in your area as well Right, so when you're applying for AmeriCorps, you're gonna be asked why you want to serve, so what's your intention, what motivates you about the position that you're applying for. You will also need to provide a couple of references. That can be people that have worked with you in volunteer roles, um, those that you've worked with in your educational goals. Um, so have some references ready. Um, and yeah, it really depends on the specific program that you're applying for. You'll definitely want to just communicate why you want to serve with them and what motivates you to to serve in that focus area. I think the really great thing about talking to Sarah or myself is maybe you saw a lot of programs in there and you're studying something completely different and you're like, how and where could my skills be used or useful and um, we can really help make those connections for you and help guide you uh, into looking at different programs where we know your your background would be a benefit to the communities that we work in so please feel free to reach out to us however we can help connect you with resources if this is something that you are interested in 
never hurts to have just kind of a discovery conversation as well. There's no commitment by contacting either of us. We won't uh, enroll you, uh, commit you to anything. Don't worry. Uh, but we are here as a resource for you uh, to learn more and to help answer your questions. So thank you so much for for having us. Thanks so much for attending and we wish you all the best in career quest and your career journey as well. Yes, thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Sarah, for jumping in, presenting, answering questions. We greatly appreciate it. Just a reminder to everybody, the session was recorded. So if you do want to go back and reference anything that was covered, uh, feel free to do so. Also attached to that recording will be a questionnaire. We just ask that you take the two minutes, fill it out. We value your opinion. Uh, so we're certainly looking for that feedback. Um, so keep an eye out for that email. It will be attached to the recording. Uh, but yes, thank you again, Sarah, Lauren, for, for jumping in, presenting. Uh, and, and a reminder to everybody that the Career Quest month is, is the full month of September. So uh, if you're interested in attending other sessions, feel free to uh, get registered for those. All of our sessions are recorded. So even if you're interested in a topic, you're not able to make it, uh, definitely register so that you get that recording for that event. But uh, thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon and have a fantastic rest of your Thursday. Take care.